So what do we think about these challenger decks? Well, I think they're a really good entry point into standard. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have the drawback of these were the decks that existed eight months in, ago in the fall, basically. Yeah. So some of them are a little dated for mm -hmm. where the metagame is now. But if you just want a deck that you can buy and be competitive and mm -hmm. like trade or buy some cards to upgrade, this is a good place to start. Yeah, I agree. These decks seem better than the lists in the past, at least in my opinion. There's a lot more value in them, and I think that they're more optimized than they have been in the past also. And maybe that's because like the prices of standard in general have come down, so they can they can put a little bit more power into the decks. Yeah, and like a couple of them have like cards that are twenty dollars now yeah in them yeah when i was writing this up like these prices might be a little bit out of date now i was kind of busy over the weekend so i actually wrote this episode like the middle of last week there was only one deck that was under a hundred dollars like if you singled it out yeah the rest of them were like 105 110 bucks and that's pretty good for that's a 25 really five dollar product yeah they are like missing some key pieces yeah the uh, the pieces that they're missing are a little spendy Yes. Which wasn't really the case for the previous Challenger decks. Like in the past, we've kind of done like a budget upgrade and then like kind of a full blown upgrade. There really isn't a budget upgrade for these. Like you just kind of yeah. have to work at the pieces little by little until you get it's, the list. It's part of partly because some of the cards that are missing are kind of playable in eternal format yeah. or just super desirable. Yep. And it just kind of like puts the their price kind of out of whack for what like they would be in standard yeah one thing that we did notice when we were going through these decks was that the mana bases aren't great but it's kind of a no-brainer to swap out like guild gates and comes into play and gain you lifelands for like shocks and temples so we're not going to include those in our upgrades like I'm, i think you guys are smart enough to figure that one out on your own yeah and those are the those are the places that they kind of have to cut corners because they can't put Eight right. rare lands in all of their yeah and all of their decks yep that's kind of the overall thing like if mm -hmm. you want a good deck for f and m this is going to give you a good entry point yeah which one do you want to pick up first if you had to play one of these decks for f and m this weekend which one do you think you're going to pick up first probably cavalcade because like it's mana is going to work yeah it, and it's a really strong deck too yeah that deck is really well built i had a hard time finding changes for it yeah this is gonna come as a shocker but i would probably pick up final adventure no the, <laughs> the green black rockish value deck yeah, no i weird, would never I guess it yeah you don't have a type or anything <laughs> not at all 